Hi guys, today I'd like to talk about Divinity Original Sin 2 and why you should play this game. Let's start this year off with a really great game. Though this game isn't perfect, a lot of the things that make this game great outweighs the not so good things about this game. So let's jump right into it. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a CRPG fan's wet dream. From its in-depth character creation, deep lore, tactical gameplay, to twisting and turning stories, and a beautiful well-defined world, this game has it all. My love for CRPG started last year with Dragon Age Origins, and after that I couldn't get enough. I love the RPG genre in general, but CRPG scratched this specific itch that I've always had. I've always wanted to try and play D&D but I couldn't find a community to play with, and CRPGs gave me the chance to do so. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a very special game. It has a pretty high learning curve in the beginning and its mechanics just get deeper the more you learn about this game. The most obvious example is the combat system. On its surface, it looks relatively simple, but the more you play, the more you learn about the different strategies and gameplay mechanics available to you, and that alone can keep you hooked for hours on end. Let's talk about the role-playing aspect of this game. When creating a character, you're given the option to choose from an origin character or a custom character. Origin characters are probably one of the highlights of this game when it comes to the role-playing aspect. Origin characters basically have their own goals and stories within the main story of the game. For example, you have Losa. A performer is possessed by a powerful demon and is slowly trying to take over her body. Her main goal in the game is to get rid of the demon before it consumes her. Another example is Fane, probably my favorite character, and the character I chose to play through the game. I don't want to spoil anything about Fane's backstory, but to me, out of all the origin characters, he has the most interesting backstory. When it comes to roleplaying, you can be anyone you want. You can be a dick to everyone you meet, or you can choose to be a noble hero. You can kill every NPC you meet, or you can choose to help them out. Or you can be someone who doesn't care at all, and do things your own way. The game gives you a lot of different options on how you want to play the game. Though there is one issue with this, but let's get back to that when we're talking about the quests. Creating your character in this game can really be overwhelming in the beginning, especially if you're going in blind. Learning what attributes do and what traits to pick up can be confusing in the beginning, but going with a pre-made character with its stats is also a good option. We'll talk more about the builds later on. Once you have chosen your character, either by choosing an origin character or creating your own, your adventure begins. During the beginning part of the game, you get to choose to play solo or with companions. This as well brings another layer of that role-playing aspect. Going through the game solo can add a layer of challenge, but you can also miss a lot of lore and backstory of the world. So this isn't something I recommend if you're going through this game for the first time. The first location in this game introduces you to the intricate gameplay mechanics that the game has to offer. This to me was the hardest part about the game, learning the mechanics. I would always get confused why I was hitting my own companions with skills. Another thing I struggled with was the status effects. It was about halfway through the beginning act of the game where I learned how to utilize my skills. Though I still had a lot to learn, but every second learning this game was worth it. Next, let's focus on the combat. As I mentioned, the combat of this game seems simple on the surface, but the more you play, the more you learn about the in-depth combat mechanics available to you. How you utilize the mechanics depends on your playstyle. I won't talk about every combat mechanic in this game because it would take me forever and half the fun of the combat is discovering what and how the combat works. But let's cover some of the basics. Like many RPG games with turn-based combat, this game is pretty similar to them. At the beginning of the combat, you'll see character portraits at the top of your screen, indicating who will go first. This is judged by who has the most initiative stat in combat. In every turn, you have a set of action points. Movement, skills, attacking, and using items will be dictated on how many action points you have. Pretty straightforward, right? But it gets deeper from there. One thing I want to highlight is how the environment and elemental skills are utilized while in combat. For example, if you use a fire skill on the ground, it will cause the surface to burn. Anything standing on the surface will get burnt. What makes the elemental effects in this game special is if you cast a water or ice based skill on the surface that is burning, it will make a smoke cloud that blocks visibility. Characters that are inside of it can have a limited range of attacks, and characters that stand outside of it can't see characters on the other side. Another example is when a wet surface is hit with a lightning spell, that surface is now electrified, which can cause shock to anyone standing inside of the wet surface. Another basic mechanic is magic armor and physical armor. Magic armor blocks magic attacks, while physical armor blocks physical attacks. Again, pretty simple, right? Well, until you add in status effects. I didn't know how this worked during my first few battles, but when I learned it, boy, was it satisfying. Basically, status effects like shock, frozen, madness are blocked by magic armor, 
While status effects like bleed, cripple, are blocked by physical armor. There's so much more to learn about the combat that I'll stop right here because we have a lot more to talk about. The next thing that I want to quickly talk about is the character builds and equipments. Again, on its surface, character builds and equipments are fairly basic. But one thing I did struggle with in the beginning was the character builds. One thing I learned is that there really isn't a character archetype in this game. Most of the RPG games I played would put you in a specific path once you have chosen your class. In Divinity Original Sin 2, it kinda does this in the beginning, but as you progress, you can really personalize your own build. Do you want to be a support tank that focuses on healing your team and tanking damage, or do you want to be a tank that also uses necromancy skills for damage and healing? Do you want to be a summoner that uses a bow and arrow, or an assassin that also uses magic? The builds in this game is really up to you. There are basic classes to choose from and optimal builds for DPS, support, glass cannon, and all that, but this game really wants you to experiment on what build you want to use. Now if we're talking about character builds, let's quickly talk about leveling up. When you level up, you get skill points to spend on attributes, combat skills, civil abilities, and talents. Attributes are your basic character stats, strength, finesse, intelligence. I won't be explaining everything in depth because it'll take us the whole day. Combat abilities affect what skills you can use in combat, like for example Warfare. Increases all your physical damage and leveling up Warfare allows you to use Warfare abilities. Same goes with other skills under combat abilities. Civil traits mostly affect how you interact with NPCs. Higher Persuasion can help you with conversation. Bartering helps you with buying and selling. You get the deal. Talents give you passive abilities you use during combat or stat boosts. Equipments work pretty straightforward. Depending on what attributes you level up will affect what gear you can equip, and they provide additional stats, but most importantly magic and physical armor. There are more in-depth mechanics to this that I just can't cover in one video, so let's move to the next topic. The story. Much like everything that we've discussed today, the story is not as straightforward as it might seem. Basically, without spoiling anything too much, the main story revolves around the God Woken and the battling factions in the world. You have the Magisters, the Black Ring, and the Void Creatures, and the Gods. They are your major factions throughout the story. You'll also meet a few side factions like the Lone Wolves, the Seekers, but we'll just focus on the major factions and the story. The story revolves around your character, the God Woken. God Woken are basically the chosen one of the specific God. There are 7 Gods in total, for all 7 races. Your god depends on what race you choose. Basically, your god will task you to ascend to divinity to fight back the Void Woken. One twist is that all your other companions are also god Woken, and only one can ascend. Void Woken creatures are these monsters that are attracted to Source. There are more to the Void Woken, but I don't want to spoil anything, so yeah. This is basically very early knowledge about the Void Woken. Source is a let's say, a more powerful form of magic. While conjuring most spells don't use source, source magic is a more devastating and powerful form of magic, and the Void Woken are attracted to source users. Again, don't worry, this is all spoiler free. The Black Ring, well, it's better for you guys to find out what they really are. Now, the main story may seem like the Chosen One story like in every other video game we've played, and to me, at first it was that, but then you get deeper into the story and you start unraveling true motives of the main characters around you, and you realize that not everything is as it seems. The twists and revelations towards the later acts of the game really kept me hooked, and it was easy to spend 100 plus hours into this game. Next, let's talk about the visuals and the audio. For an isometric game, the environment is really immersive. From the changes in the atmosphere to changes in the environment, it's really gorgeous. But the camera can be frustrating. Sometimes the camera will zoom in and out on its own. This is really frustrating when there's elevation in the environment. Got to a point where I got so annoyed that I just rushed an entire act because the camera was just hard to deal with. The visual effects during combat is very satisfying. From the explosions to how lightning strikes to physical attacks hitting, it just adds more to the immersion. And you can see them clearly. This is useful because combat will sometimes be dictated on the environmental effects at play. Video wise, the game has some of the best. From the calming music to the intense battle soundtracks, even the unique instruments that play when one of your character takes down an enemy. Overall, the visuals and audio of this game is really impressive and was done really well. The visual and audio team deserves to be praised here. Lastly, I want to talk about the quest structure. This is probably the main reason why I said that this game is really great, but it's not perfect. Let me explain. Though the main quest has some great encounters and most of the side quests and companion quests were really well written, there were some quests that just fell flat. 
What I mean by this is that the consistency of the quality of some quests just wasn't on par with some of the best quest lines. Find quests with some of the most obscure ways to progress. There will be no clues on how to progress and the only way was to look up a guide to avoid getting frustrated. There are quests where it's straightforward, some quests have unique ways on how to tackle them, while some are just plain black and white. This to me sometimes ruins some of the quests. While some quests would give you multiple options on how you want to tackle them, some quests just outright ends the same way no matter what you do. This can sometimes ruin how you roleplay. I don't really want to spoil anything too much, if you play through this game you'll understand what I mean. There are a lot of great stories within the side quests and some unique and great encounters, but the inconsistency of some quest lines can be disappointing. Not to say that the quests were horrible, no, the stories within the quests were great, it's just how some of the quests were tackled and the limited options on how to do some quests can be disappointing at times. Before we move on to my final thoughts, let's talk about a few nitpicks. First issue I have with the game is the inventory management. Inventory management can become a chore. That also goes with the crafting system. It may be hard to find specific loot in your inventory, meaning you'll have to look individually for specific things when crafting. Or if you're looking for a specific item, it can be annoying sometimes. Load times will build up as you progress through the game. This game isn't easy. You'll lose some combat encounters, and when that happens, you have to reload an old save. This isn't apparent in the earlier acts, but during Act 4, it can take a while for this game to load a save file, even on an SSD. During Act 4, some of the encounters there were tedious and annoying to go through. Not important NPCs, especially around the market area, will repeat the same voice line over and over again. The annoying part is that it repeats over and over again without stop, which can be annoying when you're trying to debate whether to sell your loot or to hoard it. With that out of the way, let's wrap this up with my final thoughts. Divinity Original Sin 2 is a great game to play, whether you're new to the CRPG genre or if you're a veteran of the genre. The amount of time I spent in this game was worth it that I might play through this game again in the future. The number of ways how you can play through this game is really dependent on your creativity with the mechanics present in the game. With an engaging storyline that will keep you hooked throughout your playthrough, unique gameplay mechanics that make the gameplay loop entertaining, with character and roleplay mechanics so deep you can sink hours and hours just building a character right for your playstyle, this game is amazing. Though admittedly, this genre of game and the mechanics it offers will not be for everyone. I would still highly suggest you play this game if you love a rich world filled with lore and a story that keeps you second guessing what you know. A gameplay loop that seems to be endless when it comes to how you tackle encounters. This game is great and I'm a big fan of it. Though it may not be perfect, but overall I had fun. If you liked anything that I talked about in this video, check this out, it will be worth it. So that's gonna be it for me today you guys. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, we're trying to reach 500 subs, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, much love.